that you couldn't hear before. It's like if you like I notice is when you being a producer and you're making a beat. It starts sounding like noise at that point. You have to get away from the beat, get away from what you're producing, and clear your mind. And then you go back into it. And then you say, okay, I want to change the treble a little bit. You know, take some of the bass out. That's what that's what the austerity is. It's stepping away from the noise of, of, of your day-to-day. -day. The noisy-mindedness. You know, the, no, the noisy stimulation. And pulling back so that you can go back with a more open, you know, more sensitive approach. So you can see what is going on. For example, people have sex all the time. But their sex isn't tantric. It's just noise. I'm horny. It's noise. They're not having epiphanies and, you know, they're not having deep, you know, energetic experiences. They get, you know, they got the porn going and they're listening to the R. Kelly or Drake or whoever it is today. You, you feel me? It's just noise. They don't know what's going on, what's happening. Even their, their, their own sensations have just taken over them. So they're not having a tantric experiences. The energy is not being channeled. You follow as Kundalini. It's not being channeled as something that can awaken their chakras and, 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 and give them an Akashic explosion and awakening. It's not happening. Their energy is just escaping through their aura, through holes in their aura. You follow? Just, just escape it. You know? It's not it's being channeled. Because if, if your crown Chakra is not open after every sexual experience. It's just noise. You're just wasting time. You're just wasting energy. So those people need to be celibate. Right? For a period of time. So they can approach the act with a sacredness. You follow? Not some rigid anal sacred rituals. Don't work. That's noisy too. Got the candles going. And I didn't wait five days. It's noisy too. Because it's a whole bunch of thoughts that are distracting you from being the energy that is channeling through you. Do you feel me? So even those sacred rituals will not get it. You have to really shut it off. And you might have to be celibate, you know, for a certain period of time. You know, so that when you reapproach the act, it is not noisy. All your centers are open. A lot of times what people are doing is they're acting out streams of thought that are going through them all day. So the actor is not even present. What they think is the actor is a reactor of everything that's going on. I walked by this car, you know, he was playing um, Sex Me Baby on his radio. That went into my nervous system, you know. Then I went over there. They was watching um, a music video with some with some women dancing in it. I didn't take that. Now I need, I need a booty call. So they're reactors. They're not actors. They think that they're doing everything they're doing, but society is doing everything for them. They're just victims. They have succumbed. You follow? They have succumbed to what is everything that is going on. Nothing they're doing is coming from a real center aspect within themselves because they don't even have a center. Black supremacy is the center. Being a black supreme being within yourself is a central point. The seer is blackness. The seer is supreme blackness. The self is seated within the most darkest part of your inner consciousness. The self is in there. You follow? It's situated in there. So when you come in from that meditation, that means that you're coming from a deeper level of consciousness than what is happening every day. In your awakened state. Some people's level of consciousness doesn't go beyond their state of interacting in an awakened state. Do y'all hear me? And some people are awakened and they are building with you from a deeper level of consciousness. Like I am. I'm awakened in you, but my consciousness is coming from a endarkenment. You follow? It's coming from a deeper place within me. Some people say, I'm meditating. I am speaking from my state of being situated in meditation. I never stop meditating. This talk just arises from my meditation. 
Some people say, you know, meditation is to get rid of all thought. No. Meditation is to get rid of the superficial layers of thought so true, the true thinker can arise. So the potency of thought and energy backing the thought stream that you have are have enough to have profound impact and to cause instantaneous manifestation. That's when they say words sound power. That now your words have a vibratory force from the deep level of consciousness that they originated from to make things happen in the physical universe. But if we're just on a very superficial stream of consciousness and thought level, then we cannot make anything happen. We can barely pay our bills, barely get a job, barely do white supremacy right. We go to a deeper level of our consciousness. We overthrow white supremacy and find out and find it to be completely unnecessary whatsoever. So our goal is not to struggle to convince people intellectually. Our goal is not to struggle to convince people intellectually to get off white supremacy. Our goal is to make them arrive at a level in consciousness where they find white supremacy completely unnecessary. Y'all see the difference? That's our goal. Because if we can to argue with it is to find half truth in the point you're arguing about to even make it worth arguing. It has to have some value to even be argued. We can't argue nothing that has zero value. Like, I, I can't believe you're trying to get me to argue that. I'm not going to do it. You'll be the fool by yourself. We will only take on an argument, right? That has some relative value. It's worth arguing. White supremacy ain't even worth arguing. Relationship confrontation is not worth arguing. Economic confrontations are not worth arguing. They're not worth arguing. When you get to that deep level of black supremacy consciousness, the things that cause us to argue about these things are rendered unnecessary. So all the argument and all the rest of the stuff just falls away. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why I go with getting people up here. And, and when people get here, it's black supremacy meditation. Black supremacy meditation. Even if they're not doing it, even if we come up here and we say, well, our work is humanitarianism, and we humanitarians, and we socialists, and we this and we that. Well, some people get lost in that. And they won't be doing that out of black supremacy. See, whatever you do about out of black supremacy is who you are. So it's being. Whatever you do out of some type of temporal social construct is an action. So it's, it's hard work. You understand what I'm saying? You're being worked to death. You don't have to, you know, a woman is not, a true instinctual mother is not working to breastfeed her child. It's who she is to breastfeed her child, am I right? So it's no work at all. She gets up at four in the morning, the baby's crying, she says, well, this is work. If she's not distracted by white supremacy, then it's the only thing to do is to feed the baby, right? It comes natural. She just turn over, put the baby on the breast. But she got to get it work at five in the morning to go suck the white man's dick, right? Then she's going to have some problems with this. This is, this is a great, it's tumultuous. It's a great tribulation to do what, what is natural. So this stuff that we do here says, oh, you're doing this 24 hours a day. Y'all working, putting this information out. Um, this is a lot of work. But it's not work to us. Because it's who we are. Who the hell are we? Who the hell else are we? To not wake our people up. To not rule. To not raise up the people, the consciousness of our people. What the hell else is it to do? Make Bill Gates richer? Make Alan Greenspan richer? Huh? What else is there to do? Help the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds? I can't find anything else to do. So in black, once the black supreme consciousness is, is arrived at truly, 
then what we're doing don't even look like work anymore. It looks like what else do we do? What else do we be? The black supremacist consciousness will turn your humanitarian doings. It will turn you to a social activist into a realized divine entity. It will turn you into a social from a social activist to a superhero. What's the difference between a social activist and a superhero? The social activist is a job. The superhero is an identity. Big difference. The superhero can be no one else. Superman can only be Superman. And I hate to use that white supremacist example. But he can only be Superman. Even if he, he's, he's in the store and he sees somebody getting stuck, he'll use his wind power to blow it, right? Or he'll let his glasses down and beam something or something, right? He can't do nothing be a superhero. He can't be a mortal, right? Once you become a black supremacist, you can't do anything else right. The black supremacist just keeps coming out of you. It just is what arises naturally. So we can't stop you from working on black supremacy. Let's then start you to work on it. And you're not doing it because of other people and what they're doing. And what they think, and what they decide, and what their ideas. That's how you can tell whether somebody are doing who they are, or are they doing what they feel like other people are doing, or what other people value. That's how you can tell. Because they are looking around them to see who's else doing it, or who's else is it valuable to. Right? But if it's who you are, remember, if you have really woke up, like we say, the whole purpose of all conscious information, and all conscious knowledge, right, is to wake up. If you fully woke up to who you are, who else are you looking for to take a vote about what you should be doing? Once you wake up, you cannot be a Democrat anymore. You cannot be a politician. It is not political. It's who you are. It's really, it's really, it's really like going to the washroom. You don't look up to see, well, let me see who, who else is going to the washroom today. Well, I guess I go. It don't happen like that, do it? It's who you are by nature. That's how black supremacy becomes to the person with an awakened mind. It's your nature to be a black supremacist. Not a group. Not a collective entity. But the nature of the individuals that find themselves and have an affinity towards the collective of those that are doing it. It's their nature. It's their nature to act this out. So it's no work at all. Being yourself is no work. People say, you know, um, I know who I am. We're the ancient comedic people. And I got a job. And, and, and my job, we're building a comedic institution. How can you be a comedic people but have a comedic institution? It's oxymoronic. You cannot institutionalize who you are. And if it is an institution, then it is not who you are. So you have not realized it. So everybody's saying, you know, we got a comedic school or we got a comedic group. You're telling me right there you're not comedic. Because everything a comedic do, a commission do is comedic. Right? So ain't no such thing as just a comedic school or a comedic institution. Everything you